Grandpa Newbie reporting for duty with a review of the Black Ops 6 beta. Now, should you buy Black Ops 6? Well, that's going to be your personal decision, but I will make a definite recommendation. Now, I'll start by saying that Grandpa already has purchased Black Ops 6. That got me into the Vault Edition beta early, and uh, then I continued through the, the open beta. So, Grandpa, I mean, once you get to be my age, you're pretty much locked in year after year to COD. How many more titles do I have left in my life? I mean, sad to think about it, but maybe true. In any case, let's get off of the gory and on to some specifics here. And I'm going to talk about my review in no particular order. I'm going to start with the Omni movement. Now, I know that there are some players, me being one of them, who was wondering, is that Omni movement going to be a requirement moving forward for me to be able to be competitive in COD? Well, first, remember their skill-based matchmaking, and then there's this mysterious EOMM, so that might partially answer the question. But to specifically answer the question, I team up with a lot of really good players, and so I get to see all ranges of skill in my enemies from fairly inexperienced new players, sometimes when I'm playing by myself, to pros. And I have played against CDL pros when I've been playing not teamed or when I'm teamed up. Every once in a while, you'll see one drop into the lobby. So how does that affect Omni Moment? Well, a lot of people were using the Omni movement. They were jumping sideways, jumping backwards, shooting, lying on their backs. The bottom line to the Omni movement is that you don't have to do it to have a good experience playing Black Ops 6. It is not a requirement. And those people that were jumping sideways and shooting are just as easy to gack as somebody that's sliding at you. So I don't think it gives a significant advantage to any player like I thought it would. I thought if you didn't do the Omni movement, then you're going to be left behind, and that just simply isn't the case. I think the Omni movement is just to add some fun to the game for people who want to use it. It by no means, like I said, is it going to be a requirement. The maps. I thought the maps were beautiful. I thought they're the typical Treyarch three-lane maps. The interesting thing, though, was that although there were a lot of tight engagements in the map and i'm throwing babylon out in the face off maps because those things were charnel houses they were a lot of fun bullets were flying from everywhere but the maps have corridors where you can get long shots on each and every one of them that i played in fact more than one corridor where you can do that so what does that mean to me well i like to get the top camo whether it's dark matter whether it's chrome for world war ii whether it's interstellar no matter what it is i get that year after year after year and a lot of times I can't go into certain maps because I need long shots, and long shots are not available on each and every map, typically on a COD title. Every single one of the maps in this beta had long shot lanes. Even the face-off map, Gala, I got plenty of long shots on that. So that's good news for you folks that are camo grinders. You're going to have a much easier time finding opportunities to get the specific challenges accomplished. As far as the weapons, I thought the weapons were fairly well balanced. I thought two or three of the weapons stood out far above the others. One of them was the XM4. I consider that perhaps the best weapon. I mean, if I were stranded on a cod desert island and only allowed one weapon, I'd take the XM4. The Jackal PDW, a lot of people said was overpowered. I really didn't see that. The LMG, I thought that's where there were maybe a few problems because that weapon was ultra powerful, especially in the face-off maps. I'm telling you, that thing was a cheese machine. You could gack them old people right through their cover. So the FMJ version of that is going to be amazing. Attachments. Attachments actually make a difference in this title as far as I can see. Now, in Modern Warfare 3, a lot of times you wanted to outfit the weapon to do something specific. So let's say you like to rush and do hip shotting or you want long shots or you want some sort of challenge to be completed. Well, you put an attachment on the weapon and then the rest of the attachments might be to counteract the negative impacts of that one attachment that you added to do something specific. Not the case from what I've seen in Black Ops 6, because the attachments, many of them were pure buffs. Now, it's going to be interesting once the advanced statistics come out at release, and they're supposed to, to see what the attachments really do to the weapons. But in Modern Warfare 3, the weapons were just about...
about as powerful bear with factory settings as they were once you added attachments. That definitely isn't the case in Black Ops 3. In fact, it's to your great advantage to rank the weapon up, especially, let's take for example the DM-10, the marksman rifle, which I thought was poor bear, but overpowered once you ranked it up. Spawns. In the first beta, the one where you had already purchased the game, I thought the spawns were atrocious. People constantly remarked on that, that I was teamed up with. You'd spawn in right in front of an enemy, and before your feet touched the ground, before you could even see anything on the map, you were dead. So, improved a little bit during the open beta. The interface itself. Now, this is very important to Grandpa, because it used to be, as COD titles changed, that I felt like I had to relearn an entire new game, and it took me a couple of weeks before I was comfortable with the interface. This interface retains enough of what we're used to in Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3, but yet simplifies a lot of the tasks of an interface. For example, the perks are right in front of you. You can see what you've added. They have a good explanation of what the perks do for you. I like the notion of, let's say, all green perks, all red perks, getting an extra perk. Uh, the gunfighter, that's pretty interesting on the interface because that gives you eight attachments to a weapon. I experimented around with it and found that some weapons, I really couldn't add eight attachments and make it a better weapon, but on others, it really made the difference. The connectivity, that's something that Activision is going to have to improve. I had stuttered throughout both with the Vault Edition beta and the open beta. My ping was all over the map, and sometimes it felt like I was getting insta-killed. It reminded me of the days when I was playing in Singapore for about seven of the titles where I had a 150 to 400 ping and I would start shooting at an enemy's back and the next thing I know I'm dead because in the 400 millisecond ping he had time to turn around see me and gack me before I even saw him so it looked like I was shooting at his back when in reality he was shooting me in the lips so that's something that I think they need to focus on a little bit to get like pings together I know they try to do that but I think they need to do a little bit better job and as far as the connectivity i did fail out of the map a few times in fact when we were teamed up uh, our entire team failed out of black ops 6 on two occasions now here's the good news with the con connectivity in my opinion after i got out of the air force i worked at microsoft for about 10 years and i know that microsoft has data centers all over the world and those data centers provide high bandwidth very fast connectivity throughout the regions. They also manage their servers quite well in their data centers. So if Activision, who is now a subsidiary of Microsoft, actually pays the minimal price back to Microsoft, they will host them on their data centers. And I'm not certain if Activision is under some contract with another provider or if they're already at Microsoft. But once they move to the Microsoft data centers throughout the world, I think we're going to see some awesome connectivity. Disbanding lobbies, I think they halfway did that because we noticed that we played against a lot of the same players on consecutive lobbies. That's not to say that it's like the classic COD where everybody stayed together and you had to physically leave a lobby to play with somebody else to have different enemies. Streaks. I think streaks were in a really good place. I disagree with some creators that say it takes too many points to get a streak. Um, I thought I streaked out several times during the beta. I thought it was fair and... And I think streaks are generally in a good place, although we weren't able to try all of them. I think the hostage taking thing is interesting, and that's where somebody hits the, I think it's the right stick down two times, and instead of executing somebody, you pick them up and you use them as a meat shield walking around. I think there is an opportunity for a lot of people to leave the game there. So overall, is Black Ops 6 worth purchasing? The answer to that is definitely yes. I think the maps, the general views that you have in the game, they're absolutely beautiful. I think the weapons work well. I think the matchmaking worked fairly well, even the skill-based matchmaking. So I was really, really pleased with the betas. Now, on the slightly room to improvement side, I think that the cheating has gotten out of hand. I've seen videos of people using wall bangs in Black Ops 6. We encountered people who were cheating 
meeting and actually boasting about it. I think that is the big Achilles heel in Black Ops 6, is how will they handle people who are cheating? And on the other side of the same coin, how are they going to handle great players who are not cheating, but then get banned? Everybody knows about Shotzi, arguably one of the best players in the world in the CDL Pro League, who went 31-0 on a map, dropped a nuke, and then immediately got banned. I know of another pro, Crim6, who is making a comeback, arguably the most successful professional COD player in history, and he also got banned for doing well. So that's going to have to improve. And again, I'm putting that on Microsoft's back because I think they will be able to do it. So do I recommend Black Ops 6 for the casual COD player to the skillful, to the advanced? Absolutely. I thought that it is a definite observable step forward in the COD community and the COD world. I think people will have fun with it at every level. I believe that the Omni movement will be good for some. They'll have a lot of fun with it. It'll be unnecessary necessary for other skilled players even and then finally it's not going to be too much of a crutch for the better players not hard to kill people who are doing the omni movement for the casual players so overall let me know what you think about it but i say yes two thumbs up from grandpa but of course i'm more interested in what you have to say drop your experiences in the comments a like and subscribe is always appreciated it helps me it helps the family i look forward to seeing you and playing with you next month once they drop Black Ops 6 if they do it on time. As always, peace to you, cheers, and thanks for watching the video. We'll see you in the COD world.